Before I share with you the development of our branding strategy, we have to go back to the history of DCH. Dean Moore just mentioned that DCH stands for Da Chang Hong. It's a Chinese name meaning great prosperous company. That is our vision. Yes, our vision is embedded in our name. We still have a long way to go to make this vision a reality. But we are committed to moving forward in that direction. D6 USA celebrated our 60th anniversary last year. But our history goes back further to the 1930s when my father started a trading company in Shanghai. At the start of the Second World War, the company moves its headquarters to Hong Kong. In addition to the trading business, it also opened a bank called Hang Seng Bank. In 1948, my father came to the United States and opened up a branch office in New York City, near Wall Street, mainly to serve as the purchasing agent for its Hong Kong parent. Unfortunately, he died of a stroke the following year. On the other hand, the company was fortunate that he had assembled a team of loyal and capable team members who were entrepreneurs in their own right. These founding fathers of DCH were empowered to utilize their entrepreneurial talents to grow the company into the largest Chinese-owned conglomerate in Hong Kong. Hang Seng Bank developed the benchmark index for the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, known as the Hang Seng Index, which we hear reported every day in world financial news. In the early 1960s, the trading arm ventured into automobile importation, distribution, and retailing and D6 Hong Kong became the largest dealer group in Hong Kong. Meanwhile, in the US, D6 USA wasn't making too much progress because as a purchasing agent for our parent company, the parent company didn't leave too much money on the table for us. So in the 1960s, D6 USA began to import food products and garments from the Far East in order to improve our profit margin. I joined DCH in 1967 as I was, I was finishing my master thesis for my MBA at NYU. At that time, the company had only about 15 employees. I was full of enthusiasm and ambition, thinking that I could utilize what I had learned at the business school to help the company grow. Little did I know that the MBA program during that period was designed mainly for people who were seeking careers as professional managers in large corporations. It was expected that the corporations would then be responsible for further specialized training. Perhaps for someone who was going to work in a smaller company with less layers of management, a program emphasizing entrepreneurship would have been more practical. I found that I had to tone down my ambition, eat my humble pie, and continue my learning on the job. Actually, this was a very good deal because instead of paying for my tuition, I got paid to get my education. I was fortunate to have some very good mentors in my early years with the company. They taught me the way I should look at things, how I should conduct myself, and indoctrinated me to the company's culture, to the company's culture, values, and its heritage that could be traced back to my father. And until today, I still benefit from these early teachings. 
I would like to share with you some of the philosophies that made the biggest impression in my mind. The first one is be willing to let others take advantage of you. In the end, you will benefit the most. This applies to career advancement as well as customer relations. At work, if you are a dependable performer, you are likely to get more work assigned to you than to your coworkers. Don't complain. By, S, by taking on the assignment, you could gain more knowledge and, it, and more experience and improve your efficiency or get to know more people. Or you may even become the go-to person whenever something needs to be done quickly. All these will, will increase your value and you would end up benefiting much more than your coworkers who didn't, get, who didn't have to work so hard. From a customer relations point of view, if customers know that you are willing to accommodate them, they would prefer to do business with you than with your competitors. You will earn their loyalty and advocacy. It would provide you with a future stream of revenues and reduce the high marketing cost of acquiring new customers. Another philosophy I want to share with you has a lot to do with our values and the development of our branding strategy. The founding fathers of DCH developed the motto, customers are supreme, serving them is our top priority. They created such a culture that DCH Hong Kong and Hang Seng Bank were known for their high level of customer satisfaction. There is a company poem that employees learn by heart. It consists of eight lines, five words to a line, and it's very easy to remember. That is, if you know Chinese. <laughs> it is translated as follows. The first line says, Good relationship starts with a smile. In other words, make people feel welcome. Second line, say your name loud and clear. In other words, a greeting should give people the impression of confidence. The third line, work with speed. In other words, be productive. Do not waste time. The fourth line, serve faithfully and honestly. In other words, earn other people's trust. Fifth line, be humble and respectful. In other words, be willing to listen and eager to learn. Don't turn people off or raise their doubt by being boastful and make them feel respected. The sixth line, Communication should be simple and precise. In other words, don't confuse people and don't waste their time. The seventh line, take care of everything for the customer. In other words, make it a superior experience. And finally, bow to thank them for their kind patronage. In other words, make sure they feel appreciated. There are many more philosophy that I can share about my indoctrination to the culture and values of DCH. But the gym does not provide me too much time, so because of the time limitation, so let's go back to the history of DCH. In 1977, because of the success of DCH Hong Kong in operating automobile dealerships there, we decided to also give it a try here in the United States. D6 Hong Kong was the distributor for General Motors, Honda, and Nissan. So we applied to each of them to become their dealer. Because Honda was still a relatively newcomer in the United States, it was expanding its dealer network 
and we were fortunate to be selected as a new Honda dealer in Paramus, New Jersey. That was our first dealership, and now, more than 30 years later, it is still the flagship store of the D6 Auto Group, and is ranked among the top five Honda dealerships in the country. At that time, people in the U.S. preferred to drive large vehicles with powerful engines. Gasoline was less than 30 cents a gallon. Imagine, less than 30 cents a gallon. Fuel efficiency was not a concern, and small cars had yet to gain acceptance especially those with front-wheel front drive. Honda was not as hard, as hard a franchise as it is now. And in certain markets, Honda had to convince their motorcycle dealers to take on their automobile franchises, even when they had no experience of selling cars. I want to give credit to Wing Lam, my predecessor, for his vision, courage, and entrepreneurship to venture into a totally new line of business for D6 USA and launch it successfully. We then learned that Honda had targeted Gardena, California, which is about 10 miles south of Los Angeles, as a future location for a new Honda dealership. We applied for it and was told that it might be a year or two before Honda would, would select a candidate, a, a candidate. There was no guarantee who would be selected. Gardena was a small community of uh, 30 to 40,000 population, but it had, a, it had a large concentration of Japanese descendants. Perhaps this was the reason why Honda, Nissan, and Toyota all chose to locate their U.S. headquarters in Gardena. It also had a somewhat notorious reputation of being, at that time, the only city outside of Nevada to license gambling casinos, although it was only limited to poker games. After driving past several neon flashing casinos, Wing's eyes lit up when he came to a vacant dealership at one of the main intersections, and that dealership was for sale. The facility was for sale. It was a previous Chrysler dealership which had moved to a, fail, uh, to a freeway location. He quickly determined that this would be an ideal location for the future Honda dealership. But if we purchase the property, we have to carry it for a year or two and might be stuck with it for a prolonged period of time if we weren't selected by Honda. Wing did a quick risk assessment and made an entrepreneurial decision that it was worth the gamble. D6 went ahead and acquired the property. And a year and a half later, when it was time for Honda to appoint a dealer, we had the best location to offer, and we were selected. I was sent to California to open and operate this new dealership, D6 Gardena Honda. We were very fortunate that soon after we opened, there was a fuel shortage, and demand for small fuel efficient vehicles were very strong. The Honda Civic was the most fuel-efficient vehicles on the market, and consumers began to realize the quality of its vehicles. Honda products became very popular, so were the other Japanese makes. Under pressure by the domestic manufacturers and the labor unions, the U.S. government imposed import quotas on vehicles and created a shortage of Japanese makes and a seller's market for them. D6 USA was lucky to have the right franchise at the right time. That gave us the foundation for our expansion into more dealerships. As we expanded steadily, we looked for ways to benefit from economy of scale. 
One area of inefficiency was the way dealerships were financed. Financial institutions offer only a floor plan line of credit for the dealer's new vehicles. When the manufacturer made a shipment to a dealer, it would draw against the dealer's floor plan line at, at the lender, car by car. When the vehicle was sold, the dealer would pay off the loan, one car at a time. Each month, the lender would send a, an auditor to the dealership to do a physical inventory. As you can see, this was a very inefficient process. We decided to think out of the box. Instead of arranging a flooring line through a bank's dealer, financial arm, a dealer, fi dealer financing arm, we went to its corporate banking division and together devised a new method of dealership financing by establishing an asset-based working capital line of credit. This concept was so new for dealership financing that it took a lot of effort by Billy Wong, our CFO at the time, to get approval by the bank. But it was worth it. Instead of financing and paying off car by car, we simply drew down the line whenever we needed. Not only did we get financing for our new vehicle inventory, we also got financing for our used vehicle inventory, parts inventory, and our receivables. And the bank did not need to send an auditor to our dealership every month. It relied on our monthly reporting and our annual audit by an outside auditing firm. The process was so efficient that the bank was willing to charge us a much lower interest rate than floor plan financing. We also saved a lot of time by not having to issue one check for each car. I believe we were the first dealership group that did not use the floor plan financing as our method of borrowing. In 1991, the founding members of D6 Hong Kong were approaching 90 years of age and wanted to cash out and the company was sold. We did not feel that D6 USA had a good fit with the new owner. With the support of my senior management team, my family and the Wing On Group of Hong Kong formed a partnership that acquired D6 USA from the new owner. It began to focus only on automobile dealership and change our name to DCH Auto Group. We now have 27 dealerships with over 2,300 team members. I'm fortunate to have the support of many loyal, hardworking, and capable team members. Many of them are here tonight. The average tenure of our management team, including the dealership department managers, is over 10 years which is very unusual in the auto dealership business, known for high turnover of personnel. We are also fortunate that our franchise portfolio is the envy of the industry. We are, we, it consists of seven Honda dealerships, seven Toyota, four Acura, four BMW, two Audi, a Lexus, a Nissan, and a Chrysler Jeep Dodge. We do not publish our data, but if we did, we would have ranked number 10 in the nation in terms of new vehicle sales. Our dealerships have won numerous awards, a list of which can be found on our website. And we are proud that we have won more of the pre prestigious Dealer of Excellence Award for Customer Satisfaction from J.D. Power and Associates than any other auto group. In 2003, we conducted a survey 
and found that there was very low awareness of these six names among consumers. We believe consumers would enjoy doing business with us if only they came to shop. So we started an ad campaign using newspaper, radio, billboards, and the, the advertising were handled by the traditional automotive ad agency. It was costly, and there were no measurable results. We didn't move a needle in consumer awareness. We learned the hard way that branding was much more than advertising. We realized we needed help from a branding expert. When Carlos Gong became the CEO of Nissan after he was purchased by Renault, he immediately engaged a top branding specialist, Larry Light, to help revive Nissan's brand image in the US. I was there when Larry presented his strategy to Nissan dealers and was very impressed with his presentation. And I had a nice chat with him afterwards. This occurred several years before, but I was able to track him down. And that was the autumn of 2005. To my disappointment, he was working full-time as Global Chief Marketing Officer at McDonald's. <coughs> However, I was happy for him when I heard that he was awarded Marketer of the Year by Brand Week magazine for helping McDonald's successfully revive its brand. There was little chance, I thought, that he could help us. And even if he could, we probably wouldn't be able to afford him. Our employees would feel proud to be a member of the D6 Holler Group, and we would gain goodwill in the community. While we were implementing phase one, we would be making preparation for phase two, which would be traditional retail advertising, but we have to do it with a unique theme. So in 2008, with the feedback from focus groups, we selected Teen Safe Driving as our course branding campaign. According to Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, car accidents are the main cause of teenage fatalities. In 2006, more than 5,000 teens died in auto-related accidents, and 300,000 were estimated to have been injured. These tra tragedies were devastate, devastating to parents, family, and friends. But the sad fact is that most of them were preventable if we could convince these teens to follow precautionary measures. Because we are in the business of selling and servicing automobiles, we know we could help. It was only natural for us to get involved. We then sought alliance with a reputable nonprofit organization, which was an advocate for teen safe driving. Such alliance would give our campaign a head start and instant credibility. Uh, credibility. We, select, we selected an organization called SAD, which stands for Student Against Destructive Decisions. With the D6 experience, that will make the D6 brand special. They will guide all thoughts and actions on behalf of DCH. They will guide everyday employee behaviors toward customers and toward each other. The D6 way is built on the D6 heritage. The soul of D6 is honesty, integrity, and the highest ethical standard. Consumers are more informed nowadays. They are more skeptical. They are very demanding. They want quality products and services 
that are of great value from brands they can trust. Who can, who can they trust? Who should they trust? We want them to know that they can, they can and should trust DCH. But trust must be earned. Just say, trust me, we will not build trust. In fact, we will make people nervous. Delivering our brand promise will earn trust among our customers. But how about consumers who have not had any experience with us? Advocacy by enthused customers who share the experience with others can help build trust. Independent third-party endorsement of the D6 brand can help build trust. This includes the awards and recognition D6 has received, especially from rep reputable customer satisfaction advocates like J.D. Power and Associates. Giving back to the community, not only in terms of money, but more importantly, time and effort can also help to build trust. Delivering the D6 way will not be easy, but that is what makes it so worthwhile. Others may identify the same brand opportunity, but because it is difficult, they will not truly commit to delivering on the promise of a welcoming, respected, productive experience for which customers will feel confident and enthused. They may not earn awards and recognition as much as we do, and they may not be able to commit to devoting the time and effort to community, to community involvement on an ongoing basis. After deciding on our brand promise, we went on to develop our plan to win. We identified the six Ps that would affect our ability to deliver our brand promise. They are people, product, place, price, promotion, and performance. What we must do in each of the Ps in order to deliver our brand promise? Here is the chart which outlines the plan to win. Under the first column, where we want to be, are our mission statement, the five key elements of the D6 way, and our brand promise of delivering an enterprising, comforting experience. Under the second column, how we plan to get there, we list the things we must work on in each of the P's. You don't have to read the fine prints, they are, they are there just for illustration purpose. And under the third column, how we measure progress, we list performance measurement factors that will help us track progress. Then we make an assessment of where we were in carrying out our functions in each of the five P's under the middle column of a chart. We wanted to be sure that we would be able to perform at the level necessary to deliver our brand promise when it was time to launch our branding strategy externally. Otherwise, if we could not deliver a brand promise, it's better not to advertise at all. The external launch should be done with a reasonable period of time after an internal launch of the D6 way. Such a period of time is necessary for us to get the buy-in, commitment, and support of team members at every D6 location and bring performance to the necessary level in each of the P's. We determined that we were ready to start the process of our internal launch in the spring of 2007. First, we held kickoff events and sessions on each coast for all managerial employees. In each event, I, Susan Scarola, who is our CEO, who cannot be here tonight because she is in the West Coast visiting our dealerships over there, and Larry Light, 
presented the DCH way, its purpose, its benefits to DCH and to its team members, and what needs to be done to succeed. At each launch event, we had breakout sessions facilitated by outside professionals to encourage discussion among these managerial level team members on what they must do to lead their teams to commit to the D6 way and bringing it to life. We also got their feedbacks to enhance the plan to win. At the end of each launch event, the enthusiastic response of the participants was overwhelming and heartwarming. We created a new position of corporate brand experience manager to develop enterprise-wide guidelines for marketing and advertising to form the framework within which each dealership would be free to customize its own message while reinforcing the brand image. This person is also responsible for following through and assisting with the brand program and its maintenance at the dealerships. Dana Rodriguez, who is here tonight, is our corporate brand experience manager. We also have local brand experience managers at the dealerships to help Dana with her efforts. Next. Dana, Susan, and I conducted mini launch events at each dealership location to bring the message to every team member. The dealership general managers and department managers also took turns to explain the five elements of the D6 way. This was important because it demonstrated their support and commitment. We also printed a very nice D6 brand book which we pass out to every team members. This is a brand book. The quality of the brochure convey a message about the importance of the D6 way. And there's a page in here that's very, very interesting. And it consists of a mirror reflecting an individual. And it says, our business is not just about the car. It is also about serving the customer. The reason for this major undertaking is that our team members are the link between D6 and our customers. Our team members must understand the D6 way. They must, we must get their buy-in, get them to believe in it, and successfully implement it so that we could deliver our brand promise to every customer every time. After the launch events, each dealership holds regular meetings facilitated by its brand experience manager. During the meetings, team members could share success stories, improve, improvement opportunities, and how to do better. All the discussions would refer to the six Ps and the five elements of the D6 way. The joy of sharing more and more success stories would help our team members generate enthusiasm and passion for the D6 way, which would become second nature to them. To be sure, there are other ways for other auto groups to be successful. We told our team members, frankly, that not everyone would be able to live the D6 way. Those that would not should find another home where they would have a better fit. However, just as we thought, the majority of our team members had already adopted the D6 culture and values. And because the D6 way was born out of our culture and values, it is easy for them to accept. We are gratified to see the progress that our team members have made in living up to our brand values. To them, the D6 way is the natural way, and the D6 way is the better way. The next, step, the next steps are the preparation of the external launch and promotion. 
That is, raising public awareness of the D6 Auto Group brand and building trust in the minds of consumers. We want ours to be their top of mind dealership when they are ready to purchase or service their vehicles. There are several challenges. Each dealership carries product from only one manufacturer whose brand dominates the dealership's advertising. The bulk of the dealership's advertising has to coordinate with the manufacturer's promotion plans and usually carries often offers of price, payment, interest rates, and rebates with an expiration date. The dealership can only contribute a small budget to promote, to promote the D6 brand. Most of the money is spent on the manufacturer's brand. The dealership, our, our dealerships are scattered over a wide geographical area. And that also dil uh, diluted the budget because we had to use more vendors. Some dealership managers want to spend money only on ads that bring immediate results in terms of traffic and sales. They do not have the patience or confidence to wait for long-term results. The next slide shows the purchasing funnel, illustrating the many steps from awareness to sales. Clearly, there is a lead time for corporate brand promotions to bring results especially at the initial stage of introducing it to the public. The prolonged recession that we are experiencing has severely impacted the auto industry and has further tightened our marketing budget. There were two approaches which we could use to conduct our promotion campaign. The first approach would use traditional advertising. With so many advertisers vying for the attention of viewers and listeners, this would be very costly to be effective. And also, we must first come up with very creative ads that can break through the clutter. And we have to design them with the more cost-effective e-media in mind. So this type of traditional advertising may not be the best at this time of the economic environment. The second approach would be cost branding campaign. We decided that in phase one, in phase one of our external branding marketing, we would implement cost branding programs. These programs would be in line with our brand values. They would require only a small budget, but would have widespread impact. It would require the support of our employees, who would take pride in being personally involved with the community. Sponsoring and getting involved personally in a worthy cause in the community would earn media attention and favorable comment. The cost would be minimal in automobiles. We know we could help. It was only natural for us to get involved. We then sought alliance with a reputable nonprofit organization, which was an advocate for teen safe driving. Such alliance would give our campaign a head start and instant credibility. Uh, credibility. We select we selected an organization called SAD, which stands for Student Against Destructive Decisions, and they became our partner. SAD helped high school nationwide to set up and maintain SAD chapters at the schools. Teens often share common interests. They listen to each other. Sometimes they are more effective in educating and influencing their peers to avoid destructive behaviors. Set chapters provide the teens with a forum to accomplish that. 
DCX is the exclusive, exclusive automobile dealership sponsor of SAD in all of New Jersey, Southern New York State, Fairfield County, Connecticut, and Southern California. DCX employees work with students from local schools to help launch SAD chapters by providing both financial and personal support. Throughout the school year, our dealerships also sponsor events and support teen efforts to educate their peers on the importance of good driving behavior. We also engage a very creative ad agency, the Joey Company, to help us design and develop a theme for our teen safe driving campaign and make preparation for our phase two advertising campaign. In the spring of 2008, we started our sponsorship of SAD with two programs to help establish or re-establish SAD chapters in schools in Oxnard, California, and Freehold, New Jersey. And th those two are our pilot, pro uh, our pilot programs. In July, we sponsored 14 students and their teacher advisors from four schools to attend SAD annual national conference in Arizona. With the help of the Joey Company, we designed a long-term community outreach promotion campaign focused on teen safe driving. The program is called Mindless Driving, Keep It Out of Cars, or K-I-O-O-C in short. It features two cartoon characters as spokesperson for the program. One is named Mind, the other is named Less. Mind and Less represent the contradictions faced by teen drivers. The teen drivers know the right way to drive, but they often make minus decisions behind the wheel, such as not wearing the seatbelt, speeding and aggressive driving, use of handheld phones, and even text messaging while they are driving. And, and they may be driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs, and they may have distractions from passengers, or they are simply careless. Materials were designed and printed, and each dealership received at least one kiosk, which consists of a vertical panel featuring mine and less, keep it out of cars, and our partnership with SAD. It also has holders for brochures and information pamphlets about teen safe driving. And when visitors come to our dealership, we show them the kiosks, we show them the brochures and pamphlets, and so that they know that this, our, 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 our service is available to them. In October, Susan and I held kickoff events on both coasts with senior officers of SAD and students from SAD chapters. They also participate. A number of news media attended the events, which were reported in local newspapers and the news wire. The story was later picked up by automobile trade publications. The positive response of the news media confirmed that our course branding campaign was very newsworthy. We also, had the, we also laid the groundwork for an effective grassroots marketing plan. In November, one of our dealerships, D6 Freehold Nissan, staged a safety fair. The Law and Public Safety Department of New Jersey sent their safety cruiser and was there for four hours to educate the uh, people on teen safe driving, on actually on safe driving in general. Set chapter from Freehold Township High School was there in force. The TV station News 12 NJ was there and aired a story later. Asbury Park Press was there to interview the students and our general manager, Barry Cottrell, and reported the event in the local section. 
the Breeze radio station broadcast the event from the dealership. Four radio stations promoted the events free. And local businesses were very kind to donate all the food for the event. The entire fair cost the dealership almost nothing, and it generated a lot of good publicity. The trade publication Automotive News named DCH Freehold Nissan one of the nation's 10 208 innovative dealerships of the year. Our dealership teams continue to build relationships with more high schools and community leaders, and more set chapters are being launched. In July of this year, we are going to sponsor 50 students and their teacher advisors to attend SET National Conference in Washington, D.C. In addition, we have developed more parallel partnerships with other nonprofit organizations, including RAD, which is Radio Artists, Actors, and Athletes Against Destructive Decision, and NOYS, National Organization for Youth Safety, and Girl Scouts of America. May is NOYS's National Youth Traffic Safety Month. D6 Auto Group responded by staging teen safe driving events last weekend in all 27 of our dealerships. All DCX sponsored set chapters participated. Some cities sent their fire trucks and firemen together with cars that were crashed in automobile accidents to prove the point and to demonstrate how rescues were conducted. State troopers also gave their support and it came to show how people would see things when they are intoxicated. And then news media also came to cover the event. In 2009, two special customer programs were launched. The first is the DCH Friends and Family Program, and the other is the DCH Partner Purchase Program. We are working on so many events and programs that we created a new position, Director of Corporate Marketing and Brand Development, to follow through and coordinate. A strategic marketing committee has been formed. And because of the importance of e-commerce, we have also hired an e-commerce director. We are now ready to start phase two. The Joey Company has developed a unique retail message, and the Strategic Marketing Committee has selected a retail branding campaign, a unique one which would leverage our strength and would distinguish our ads from the clutter of hard sell used by other dealers. I'm sorry I cannot share with you now, but you'll see it when the campaign comes out. Our next steps will be to expand our Miners Driving Keep It Out of Cars campaign. We are about ready to launch our advertising campaign, and we will seek more opportunities, more opportunities for earned media. And we will utilize third-party endorsement to help build consumer trust. At the same time, we will continue to improve the effectiveness of our grassroots and internet marketing. Consumers are changing the way they buy. We ask our team members, have you changed the way you buy certain items? Are you buying more items online? Do you choose brands that let you buy the way you want to? If so, do you think we also need to change the way we sell? What do, we, what do we mean by grassroots marketing? Grassroots marketing is personal. It does not go through traditional advertising. It includes the D6 Partner Purchase Program and the D6 Friends and Family Program. It involves referrals, 
word of mouth recommendations based on customer testimonials. It also includes active community involvement in coordination and coordination with civic organizations. In addition, we will utilize social media such as Facebook and Twitter. Social media is rapidly gaining ground. Reggie Bradford, the CEO of Virtual, a social media company, says, consumers will play the most important role in the development of this next generation of the automotive industry. Car companies must look to social media as a more influential, effective, and efficient way to start a dialogue with their customers. The effort we have invested so far in our branding initiatives is beginning to bear fruit. Here are some of the examples of our customers' testimonials. My satisfaction with ECH was once again reinforced by the manner I was treated and the turnaround time it took to get my car repaired. Your staff is hardworking, customer-oriented, and genuine, traits that I have not come to associate with the auto industry. He made the entire process a very painless and pleasant experience. For the first time, we left the dealership last Saturday, March 7, feeling that we were not taken advantage of. That felt really good. By the way, you can see from the last three, com last three comments that customers compare the experience at DCH with negative image of dealerships that they have in their mind. Many customers do not have high esteem for auto dealers. One of the goals of the D6 Auto Group is to help change that image. We also want our team members to be proud of what they do and hold their heads high when they tell others that they work at the D6 Auto Group dealership. Here are some more evidence that we are heading in the right direction. Each chart shown is taken most recently from DealerRater.com's New Jersey Dealer Customer Satisfaction Ranking, according to their consumer survey. Due to the space limitation, it shows only the top five of each franchise. Consumer rate the dealership on a scale of zero to five, five being the highest, according to their first-hand experience. And the red frame shows the DCX dealerships. And as you can see, most of them are ranked top, top among the uh, uh, dealerrated.com uh, rankings. All DCX dealerships are among the top ranking. Another initiative is to get all of our dealership women certified. Women Certified is an organization which verifies that an organization has completed the training and passed the test of satisfying the expectation of female customers. Many major corporations have undergone this certification process. Women's styles, minds, reactions, and expectations are often very different from men's they have to be treated differently. Why women certified? Over 83% of all consumer purchases are made by women, making them the primary customer in almost every industry. According to Road and Travel magazine, women purchase 65% of all new cars and 53% of used cars, while influencing 95% of all auto purchases. That statistic surprises me. 95% of all auto purchases. Further, further third-party verif verif verification of our brand and the training by Women Certified would reinforce our brand, uh, our brand value. When it comes to brands, women expect different things than men. 
the brand she uses must not only perform the way she wants it to, it must treat her the way she wants to be treated. And that's why we want to be women certified. Some people ask us, with the auto industry undergoing a severe downturn, is this the right time to move forward with our branding strategy? Our answer is yes. We must keep the momentum going. We cannot pull back. We have to keep making deposit in our branding account. And we will manage our progress using the process cycle. As I mentioned, our success is still work in progress. We have gone through two-thirds of the initial cycle. There are strong signs that it is working, and we are confident that it will yield a bountiful harvest after going through a couple of cycles. So please give me your feedbacks about our branding strategy. We are learning as we go, and your feedback will be very helpful. It is my pleasure sharing my experience with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. is a, an organization and they would come to train they would come uh, we just had a training uh, two weeks ago right Dana they came to train all our managers and let them know that how women feel and it was an eye opener there, there, there was the thinking of women is very different from men and if we treat a woman like we treat a man they will they will not be happy. They will not feel that they are respected. That's why, uh, as I understand, almost all women, they hate to go to dealership by themselves. If they go to dealership, they want to have a man with them, right? So, so we realize that it is, women need special uh, treatment and, and most of the uh, employees at automobile dealerships are men. So we have to get a training to understand how women feel. And once we've gone through the training, our managers will go back and coach the, our team members. And our team members would go through an online training and they would have to take a test on the online training. And at least 70% of our customer interfacing employees have to pass the test and then we get certified. One more question. Uh, did you uh, consider using the drive camps for the teenage safety driving, maybe partnering with an insurance company as well? The using the drive cam. Yeah, driver cam. The, you know, it is a camera built into the cars and you know installing the drive cams into your cars is a supplement for your customers and using that for teenage drivers safety and maybe partnering with an insurance companies did you ever consider using the drive cam well that's that's a good idea and uh, uh dana is here perhaps you can discuss with Dana afterwards and then we can, we, can, we can learn something from you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask, thank you very much for that great talk and very informative uh, and just a great uh, personal journey. I'd like to call up Dean Moore to give you a, a token of our appreciation. Thank you.